the President of Equatorial Guinea, His Excellency Obiang Gema Basogo, and the Government of Equatorial Guinea are changing the lives of their citizens in dramatic fashion and bringing power to their people. As one of the pillars of sustainable economic and social development and of the democratic process in the country, President Obiang Gema Basogo put forward his National Economic and Social Development Plan, termed Horizon 2020, that was adopted in November 2007 at the Second National Economic Conference. President Obiang Gema's vision is to raise the quality of life for the people and bring economic diversification to the country and make Equatorial Guinea an emerging economy and accelerate its development and the stable and sustainable democratization by 2020. The project of bringing the solar energy to the island of Anobon came from the vision of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Obiang Gema, who is the President of the Republic and Head of the State. A vision with which he have a set of objectives, how to improve the living condition of his population, not the present population, but also the future generation. And from there, he decided by saying, listen, we have an opportunity to have oil in this country. We want to use that oil to set up the economic and social development of a future generation, using those resources to improve those conditions. And by doing it, we wanted to move to what is more or less the present use of resources to renewable resources. And what was the best solution for him was to go through solar energy. So we were attracted by that vision. Macy has seen firsthand how the government of Equatorial Guinea is investing in long-term future. The, both the president of the country, President Obiang, as well as the Minister of Mines and Energy, uh, Minister Obiang Lima, they definitely have a vision for the future of the country. They're using oil revenue, natural gas revenue, non-renewable resources to invest in fu the future of the country. Uh, renewable energy solutions, like on Annabon Island, are setting the platform for future growth and will sustain themselves for decades to come. Africa has been called the darkest continent. For the simple reason, if you take a flight and fly during the night from Europe to Africa, you can see the difference. In Europe, you fly Europe overnight, there is no difference between the day and night. But when you go to African continent, it's completely dark. But Africans really need, definitely, desperately need opportunity in the energy sector. And that opportunity cannot come from other electric system, cannot come from using the oil to go through uh, generators and so on to produce, because that will be affecting the environment also. So the best solution is to work and last. And work and last in Africa is the soil. The sun is really free in Africa. You have it all over. And the equator just passed through African continent. So you, I mean, the opportunity is there. And it's cheaper. Solar energy is 50 to 60 percent cheaper than normal conventional energy system. Objective of the President of the United States, Barack Obama, is said that he wants to put emphasis on the renewable energy is one of the things which are encouraging us also to go this direction. And the opportunity is there for African continent. Let the African continent seize it and a pioneer exists. He have launched it with the president of Equatorial Guinea, his excellent Obiang Gema, and we are convinced that is achievable. Equatorial Guinea is taking advantage of its unique opportunity to use its non-renewable oil wealth to foster the well-being of its present population and future generations. As stated time and again by the Minister of Mines and Energy, Gabriel Bega Obiang Lima of Equatorial Guinea, one of the priority elements embodied in the president's vision is the determination to build a solid foundation of energy solutions to power and accelerate the country's economic growth, create jobs, and elevate the standard of living of the people of Equatorial Guinea. The president of Equatorial Guinea has demonstrated the political will to make this happen and has prioritized and directed efforts within the government and by doing so, kept an eye on the long-term future of the country. One of the government's target areas in Equatorial Guinea that has great potential but is handicapped due to a severe lack of access to electricity is Anabon Island. Anabon is an island off the coast of Equatorial Guinea in western Central Africa. 
After an extensive study of other renewable energy technologies, as well as the idea of running an electric cable from the mainland, cost estimated over $3 billion. Solar energy was by far the most logical solution. Solar energy is the most cost-effective, reliable, safe, and readily deployable solution. Solar energy is abundant, since EG is so close to the equator, and solar can be deployed directly at the point of use. In addition, it has relatively low ongoing maintenance. Since solar is a universally adopted and understood technology, there are more people available to service the systems and train people on the island. To concretize this objective, the government of Equatorial Guinea has chosen a United States company, Management and Economics Consulting Incorporated, Macy, to bring sustainable and environmentally friendly electrification to Anabon. The Anabon Island project is historic for a few different reasons. It's going to be the largest self-sufficient microgrid project on the continent of Africa and perhaps in the world. What that means is that all the electricity needs of the island will be satisfied by the microgrid. There will be no other power generation source. And uh, being a five megawatt project uh, with room for expansion, that will not only cover the needs of the island today, but as demand and uh, industrialization increases, we have the ability to increase the capacity of the system. Macy is currently in the process of deploying a historic solar electrification project in Annabon. Macy is installing a 5 megawatt solar microgrid system on Annabon Province. The Annabon Island Solar Project is historic in that it will be the largest self-sufficient solar project on the continent of Africa, and one of, if not, the largest in the world to date. The island-wide microgrid will provide reliable, predictable power, supply enough electricity to handle 100% of the island's current and near-future energy demand, and enough capacity for future expansion. The solar microgrid will feature 5 megawatt solar modules and system integration by Macy. The island does not have the electrical infrastructure as we know it that needs to be to have a proper running stable grid. What Macy's done is build a best-in-class organization of partners, strategic partners to build the 5 megawatt system on Annabon. From a, a, a energy harvest perspective, the, the system will be able to harness that energy and be able to utilize by the citizens in, with a non-carbon based generation. So not only are they getting consistent power, they're also saving the environment. Macy has sourced the most cutting edge technologies and secured partnerships with the leaders in the solar industry. An energy management system and controls from Princeton Power Systems and Eaton Corporation. Energy storage from General Electric and solar panels from Nexus Energy Solutions. I think solar has come a long way in the past 10 years. Um, solar prices have come down, so it's economically much more attractive than, than when the solar industry really started. Um, I think the, the amount of sun in that area is, is, is very good. Um, so you're getting a lot of resources there that you can um, take advantage of. So we think it has all the right ingredients for solar to work well. And, um, and then when you combine storage with it, you know, the sun shines during the day, but people need power 24 hours a day. So that's where the storage comes in to be able to complement the solar. And, and the combination of those technologies will provide a microgrid for reliable power 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Eaton is supplying our latest power distribution and medium voltage switch gear that we supply to other grid connection, energy storage, and solar projects here in the U.S. And we're providing that same level of technology of grid connection switch gear for this project in Equatorial Guinea. Yes, Arrow has developed a solar panel for Macy. Um, along with like GE developed a battery um, and another company that developed a plastic frame. Uh, this is all very innovative products. They is one of a kind and it's probably the most advanced in the world. There is no other technology out there that are able to withstand the, the unforgiving coastal environment like the product that we have developed. Well, we sit at the center between the renewable energy sources, solar in this case, and the uses uh, that the, uh, the population of, of Annabon Island uh, will use the electricity and it's all controlled uh, by the system that uh, we sit in the center of. 
So there's a battery, a key battery component, which stores the energy, uh, the solar, which harvests the energy from the sun, and we control all that and determine where that energy goes and how it gets there. Princeton Power Systems talks a lot about our product at Alcatraz Island, which is a very high profile uh, in you know major population center solar microgrid. We think of Annabon Island as being similar in nature, but more than 10 times the size. The Annabon Electrification Project will be the platform for economic growth on the island by bringing a much needed power supply that will enable the development of multiple industries Add 700 to 1,000 direct and indirect jobs to Annabon Island and significantly raise the standard of living. Goals to Annabon, short term to higher quality lighting, power basic electronics, cell phones, laptops, TVs and radios, air conditioning, as well as refrigeration of food and medicines. Long term, develop commercial fishing industry, tourism, clean drinking water and update and rebuild existing infrastructure. The goals of Annabon Island are twofold. First is in the short term, having access to electricity will take care of the basic needs that most of us have every day. We'll be able to power a laptop, be able to power a cell phone, we'll be able to refrigerate medicines and food, things that we take for granted. So to get them a basic lifestyle, that's the first step. The second phase of this would be the long-term goals. The long-term goals of the island would be to develop a commercial fishing program, there's a huge potential for commercial fishing off the island. Uh, it's a natural tourism spot based on its location. Uh, things as uh, building out the infrastructure of, of the island, uh, hotels, um, they're planning a soccer stadium, um, more hospitals for the, for the people. In addition, clean drinking water. That's a huge priority of the government to provide clean drinking water and those types of plants can be powered by the solar system. I think the impacts are enormous. The this immediately it allowed the, the, the people that live in Annabon to have elevated uh, living. They're going to have power that they not used to have. Um, in the long term, I think it's going to bring, the, bring additional business in. Uh, the workforce is going to be more stable. It's going to be more educated. And we believe that it's going to have a long, profound impact and eventually it could even become a technological uh, a gateway for the entire Africa area. The Annabon project is not only tackling the generation side of the electrical equation. It is, it is also taking on the, the, the efficiency side of any power generation. So we are changing out all of the lights on Annabon and taking most of the 60 to 100 watt light bulbs that everybody has in their homes, in their businesses, and we're taking them to nine and a half to 10 watts. So we're reducing the electrical demand that's put on the system from the lighting perspective by up to 80%. So by doing that, that meant that the government didn't have to put as much generation into the system and save the government uh, money that they can put into other projects to help build the economic development that it needs to meet Vision 2020. This particular project is one of the corner bases of Vision 2020 to build the electrical infrastructure for the island and the country so that the next stage of the economic engine, which is businesses, can come in and flourish and provide additional jobs. President Obiang Gema and Minister of Mines and Energy Gabriel Bega Obiang Lima have plans to continue the development of alternative energy solutions within the country and create an alternative energy center of excellence for the sub-Saharan region. In cooperation with Equatorial Guinea, Macy has plans to partner with the leading universities in the United States that focus on energy and environmental policy. This program will provide cutting-edge training and resources to support the alternative energy field and make Equatorial Guinea the hub for sustainable energy and environmental policy of Africa. Equatorial Guinea has the ability to take development of the sector to the next level. Success will propel economic growth of the country and region and greatly enhance the lives of millions of people. 
as well as build a thriving and robust job creation engine. This project is just the start and will create thousands of temporary and permanent jobs across the country within the next 12 months. You know, a market like Africa is so exciting. It's not only delivering electricity to people who don't have it, but also applying new technologies and, uh, and new applications for our products that we've used in other places around the world. We think this is a historic project for, for uh, Equatorial Guinea and, and the people on Anabon Island. I think bringing power to that uh, region of the world where they really need it, where they've had a primitive infrastructure for a long time, and, and you know, leaping ahead to the next generation um, in the industry. So we think we'll have a lot of positive impacts for the people and the country, uh, bringing power to those people who haven't had reliable, reliable power for a long period of time is very important. Uh, we think it will you know, impact and improve the quality of their life, uh, their economic well-being, and, and position the country as a leader uh, going forward. We see the applications for what we do to be far greater outside North America. Anabon is the first really large example of that. In terms of scale and, and what we're going to be able to do in terms of generating renewable electricity uh, on an islanded system, this really is a, a groundbreaking project, not just for Africa, but really for the whole world. In the world, you have always pioneered people who have a different vision, who come out maybe within a century, maybe within two centuries, we may have one or two or three of them. We're going to the president of Equatorial Guinea as one of a visionary person on the continent who have come out with that vision, how to improve the living condition of his population, how to move forward, how to, to leave something behind and show people that can be done. And that will really attract us so much. It's his vision, the way he sees the future of his population, of that small part of the world, which can be, become more or less a, the base for extension to other countries in the African continent. People have been talking up to now about environment issue as a scientific. President Obiangema have not seen as a scientific, as a theory. He have put it in practice and is showing to the rest of the world how the environmental issue can be solved. And they will fulfill also not only the vision of the president of Biangema, uh, the president and head of state of Equatorial Guinea, but we fulfill also our aspiration by working with him. We will achieve our aspira aspiration. After so many years, we have been working with the African continent to at least see a bright spot on what one can call the future of the African continent.